Hey guys, Chris Dick here. So today I'm going to teach you how to install virtual machines on Microsoft Azure. Now these virtual machines will also run in a virtual network, which is pretty cool. And it's a very easy system to set up in Microsoft Azure. It took me a little bit of time to understand how the system works, but once I figured it out, it's really easy. So let's get started. So one of the things that you see here in this list is I have six virtual machines running right now. They're all in stop mode, but I have them all set up and I can run them at any time. Now, you'll notice the naming conventions. I have a name node and then five data nodes. That's because the name node in this case is going to be controlling the other five machines in parallel. So um, what we're going to do here now is we're going to start off by creating a virtual machine with Ubuntu uh, server installed. And, uh, and then we're gonna set up SSH. We're gonna make sure that everything works in that virtual machine. That's the goal of our uh, lesson today. In the series though, I'm gonna take you through adding other machines and connecting them as a network. So let's get started. So we'll click on the create button and go to virtual machine. Now, when we get here, you're presented with subscription and resource group. This is a fairly common thing in Microsoft Azure, so you're probably well used to doing that. However, if you're not, you can see that I've got several different subscriptions here. My uh, Azure student for students subscriptions are ones that I will use for other purposes, but today I'm just going to use one of the ones that I have set up for my school account. My resource group I'm going to use one called virtual machines. If you don't have something set up already, just click, click, click on create new. It's very simple and you'll see that it, you, all you have to do is just type in virtual machines. Most important, recognize the naming conventions. There's no spaces here and uh, that's something that Azure forces you to think about. Now my virtual machine name, in this case, as I mentioned, I'm going to start off with uh, the name node name. OK, and as I set up this network, it's going to kind of carry through name node through the rest of my uh, my network. So this is going to be really important as I set up. Now, on uh, when it comes to the region that I'm in, I'm in Canada East. So I'm going to click on Eastern Canada <clears throat> and we're going to be selecting uh, Ubuntu Server 20.4. Uh, LTS Gen 1. You can select other images. You'll see there's a few other choices here. I'm going to go with uh, Ubuntu Server. Um, then we're going to click on the size of server that we have. So this is an important one here. Be very careful when you're choosing this, um, especially if you're using a student account. It will also, uh, uh, it'll almost always prompt you to do something that's a lot more expensive and probably out of your range for affordability if you're a student. But if you're not a student uh, and you have some credits, try some of the good options, but not the best because you'll burn up those credits way too fast. I always start off with the B1S version here. This is the, the version that's about the, the least expensive. There is one more least expensive option, but I find that this one works best for my purposes, whereas the uh, B1LS kind of failed a few times while I was working with it, and uh, so it made me choose the B1S. So let's select that. Now, as we're going through here, because we are setting up a um, we're setting up a system that uh, number one, it's going to be using a shared uh, public key, a shared SSH key. So this is important. This this key is what we're going to use throughout the whole of our uh, of our network. So it says generate new um, new key pair. So in this case, we're going to generate a new key pair because this is the first one in the group of computers that we're working with. Um, you can use an existing, which is one that we will have soon. Once we create this one, we can also use a public key, which is pasteable. Uh, you'll see here it's pasteable right there. Um, so generate a new key and I'm going to call this Hadoop because I'm going to be building a Hadoop uh, network. Um, well, you know what? Let's make this easy. Let's just call it uh, SSH key pair. Oops, got to learn how to spell. So let's do that. We're going to call it an SSH key pair. Okay. 
Now, as we look through here, you'll see other uh, things like inbound port rules. Now, inbound port rules essentially means that anything that's coming uh, into your server, okay? So when we think about uh, things that are coming in, that means uh, if someone's do a, a, doing a website um, call to your, your server, that would be on port 80. Uh, in this case, we're setting up SSH, which is on port 20, uh, 22. So and that's a standard port so we're going to keep that one right now although it says some it gives you some messages here for now just remember we're just building a test machine if you're building this for production you want to uh, you'll want to think a little harder about the security so let's click next here I'm going to turn off that message is not important now we think uh, about our OS disk type as well one of the things that you'll notice is that Azure always gives us the best. And we're not really interested in the best. It's not that important at this case. But you might, if you want to, uh, you might find that it's important to do that if you're building this for production. In my case, I'm just going to be sitting uh, very, very subtly with... Um, with, I, I'm going to go with the standard, and this would be because I'm going to be using it for some light duty. It's going to be going back and forth, and essentially I don't want it to stall on me because I'm going to be using SSH quite a bit, but we'll go with that either way. <clears throat> the encryption type, there's not many to choose from here. It's either encrypted or double encrypted, so let's just keep the default. And we'll click Next. Now, what you're going to see here is um, we've got some choices. So our virtual network, it's going to be setting up a, a virtual network called virtual machines uh, dash vnet. I'm, going to, I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep that. The subnet is um, called default. So I'm okay with keeping that. I, th I think that's all right. Nothing wrong with that so far. Uh, the public IP address is giving me a default again. I think I'll keep with that. Now, when we look at the NIC security group, uh, we're going to keep that as basic, okay? The um, SSH ports, as we set up before, are, is also SSH 22. We'll keep with that. And I think we're all right going forward here. Uh, place virtual machine behind an existing load balance solution. We don't have anything right now, so let's just move forward. All right, management. Now this can be important as well. So, so think a bit about this a little bit if you're doing this per, for production. But most importantly, I really like the auto shutdown feature. The reason here, it, it's it's very important to think about this one because a lot of times we will just forget. We'll go out someplace and we'll forget the, that these virtual machines are running and they're costing money while, we're, while they're running. That's why, if you noticed, all of my machines are stopped. So let's just do this here. I'm gonna stop everything at 11.59 p.m. and I'm gonna make that in the same time zone that I'm in so that um, I know what time I can expect. Okay, now it's also going to send me a not notification before it shuts down, so that's fine. I'm going to keep with that, um, and uh, we can enable backup. I'm not going to do that right now. It's not that important for me. Uh, let's see what else. What do we have for choices here? Nothing else is choices for the uh, orchestration options. So let's move forward. And I think we're pretty stable here. I don't think we need to think about any of the um, any of these options here for the advanced tags. Uh, tags, we don't need to worry about this. This is things like if you that you want to be uh, identifiable um, in the um, in the list that we're looking at as well. So you probably don't need to worry about that too much. Okay, now we can review and just make sure that we've got everything we want. Again, if you're trying to set up this as just to learn how to do this, remember, set it up with the least expensive options. It's not going to hurt you, but you can really, you can get really hurt, pounded if you, if you, if you use the wrong uh, choice. So be very careful about where you choose this uh, subscription option here. Make sure that the size of your machine is what you are hoping for. And it should be fairly cheap. So um, once you know that, we can get started. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to click on create. And it takes a couple minutes to create. So uh, be aware of that. Um, 
the next step that it's asking though is it's saying download the private key and create the resource so what did we do earlier we created an ssh P, uh, key pair okay and it's saying hey download that key pair just so that you have it available so let's download it right now and it should download it with the name that we gave it so i called it an ssh key pair all right and i'm going to let's say let's say we're going to put it up here uh we're going to just throw it in here why not okay i'm going to call this azure and create another folder called security and I'm going to put it right there. Notice the file extension as well. It's called a PEM file. All right, I'm going to save that. Now you notice it's uh, it's creating this resource. It'll be done soon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to think about how do we connect through to the to our virtual machine through uh, WinSCP. So you're going to find me doing this fairly frequently, so make sure you have WinSCP available. Um, I do like using this WinSCP. It seems to be the, the uh, de facto standard. There's a lot of others, but let's get started with it. So I have uh, WinSCP at my taskbar here, and you see that I've got a whole bunch of other, th other uh, types of uh, nodes set up. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start off by doing a new site. Okay, and once our virtual machine is ready, uh, it looks like it's ready now, so I'll click on go to resource. Okay, so you're going to see that I have a lot of information about my system already. Okay, my public IP, which is really cool, I've got a publicly accessible virtual machine right now, so that means I can call into it from, from outside, which is what I'm going to do right now. We're going to copy that public IP. And we're going to place it right here. Just paste it right in. Okay, that's the host name. We're going to keep the port as 22 because we're using SSH. Now, one of the things that we did while we were setting up our virtual machine is we said uh, we gave it a username, and we we just simply put in Ubuntu. No password. That's just the administrative user. Okay. The next step is we're going to go to Advanced, and we're going to go to Authentication. All right. Now at this point, it's going to be asking me right now. We have the private key file. Okay. Now watch what happens. That one that I just used. Okay. Um, I just used a PEM file. Okay. And it doesn't really like that. So I'm going to show you what happens here. So if I click on open, it's going to say, do you want to convert this SSH open SSH private key to PuTTY format? And yeah, I'm going to do that. So we're going to click on this and it's automatically going to suggest a, a file name for it. And it's going to be a PPK file extension. So we're going to click on save. Private key was converted and saved. Okay. I'm going to use that. And that pops it into that name and just, just the, as we need it. Okay. So we're going to click on okay now. All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. Okay, and I'm going to put it in the in in my uh, Azure videos. And why don't I call this name node two? But you can call it anything you like, and you should probably call it name node. I'm going to call it name node two because I have one already. And we're going to just click on log in. Now, what this is going to ask first here, first here is is going to ask um, just for the certificate. We can pretty much safely say. Yeah, I'll accept that. No problems. This is going into a bare bones virtual machine. So of course there's, there's security risk, but in this case, we're not that worried about it. So we'll click on yes. Now, once we connect, um, you see I'm in what's called the Ubuntu home directory. Now, not, not the Ubuntu. This is my user directory because I'm logged in as Ubuntu. Okay. Now, um, this isn't very exciting the way it is, but we're going to start off by at least getting into the system and seeing what else we can do in the system. So what we clicked on here, just so you know, I clicked on the putty icon. Okay, and this is another uh, application that's installed with WinSCP that you use uh, putty. Putty is a great little SSH tool. Love it. Simple to use. 
But either way, I'm into uh, my virtual machine. This is it. I'm I'm here now. If I click on LS, uh, let's find something that might be a little bit more exciting, though. Um, let's uh, make a directory. I'm going to call it stuff. Okay. If you look over here, I created a directory called stuff. And if I do LS again, I've got a directory called stuff. So we're right now, we, we have full access to our, uh, our virtual machine. Now, something else that I like to do is I like to uh, upgrade my virtual machine. Okay. And um, upgrade and up uh, and install everything, or sorry, update it and upgrade everything. It's kind of two different things that we're trying to accomplish. But if we click on that, it, you're going to see it's going to run through all of these updates. And uh, it goes through the process of installing everything for us and just getting it all up to date. Um, the next step that we do is um, we upgrade anything that came in as well. Okay, so that's another process that we can do. It's asking, do, do I want to do this? And I'm going to just say yes. It's only asking because it's going to use some disk space and why not? Let's just go for it. So we click on OK. And it'll go through that process of doing the upgrade. And once that's complete, my work is done here. So I'm going to stop the video about here. This is pretty much all we need to do to make sure that we've actually got a, uh, the, our network started. So the second video that I'm going to do in this is going to talk about adding more nodes to our cluster here. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Remember to like and subscribe and uh, keep those comments coming. Love it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.